In this video I'll be discussing my solar stats for December 2023 and what a terrible month it was in terms of generation. If you watched my last video you'll know that I have had this system for 12 months now and December last year was by far the worst month as well. So let's take a look, see how bad it was on my East West Array. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, Happy New Year. I'm Dan EV Solar and on this channel you can follow my journey all things EVs, renewables, solar panels and much more. Just as a reminder of my system, I have 16 solar panels, I have 6 on my east facing roof and 10 on my west facing roof. I also have a 5 kilowatt Gen 1 Give Energy Hybrid Inverter and a 9.5 kilowatt hour Gen 2 Give Energy Battery. As I mentioned in my last video, which you can check out here, I had my system installed on the 19th of December 2022 and now had it over a full year. And this is just a quick video today to give the update for my December stats for this year. It's the first uh, time I've had a full December month worth of stats. And I must say, I can't wait for spring to start to start getting some sunnier days. And if we start by looking at December 2023's generation charts, as you can see, for the whole month, we made a whopping grand total of 50 kilowatt hours across the month. 23 kilowatt hours of that went straight into the home to power the home. 13 kilowatt hours went to charge the battery and another 13 kilowatt hours went back to the grid once the battery was full. As you can see, the best day of the month there is 4.23 kilowatt hours on the 6th of December. And you'll notice there's a blank space in there on the 3rd of December where we generated a grand total of 0 kilowatt hours. So we'll look at that in more detail as we go on. But yeah, the house was covered in snow that day. Uh, no sunlight getting to the solar panels and that is uh, by far the worst day we've ever had with the solar panels since we had them installed. If we look at the total monthly generation you can see there's a nice curve there from January up to June, peaking in June and then back down to December which as I say was by far the worst month in terms of generation. As I mentioned earlier I have an east-west array. I think what you'd probably see with a south facing array is a less steep curve so we get really really good summer generation when the sun's high in the sky but during the winter it just doesn't get high enough in the sky to to make a meaningful difference to our generation and again similar pattern here so this is where I map the best worst and average monthly generation so the best day as I mentioned was 4.23 kilowatt hours the average for the month of December was 1.63 kilowatt hours and the worst day was zero so I changed my tariff quite a few times throughout the month. So in the middle of March, I moved to Octopus Flux. And then around about September time, mid-September, I moved to Intelligent Octopus Go. So quite a few tariff changes utilizing the best of Octopus's smart tariffs. And if you'd like to move to Octopus Energy, it would be great if you could use my referral link that's on screen now and also listed in the description as well. If you use that, we share £100 and you get £50 just for signing up. I also get £50 as well, which helps to go towards funding this channel and helps me to keep creating content. So let's start by taking a look at the worst day of generation ever on my system. And this is quite an impressive graph. So this is a generation for the 3rd of December. I've never ever seen it look like this, but every single figure is zero. I don't usually show this graph for the, the worst generation day, but I thought that one was worth throwing in. If we look at the day in slightly more detail, you can see there was a tiny, tiny bit of generation. Not enough to register as a, a kilowatt hour on the reading, or even 0.1 kilowatt hours, but uh, a little bit there. So although the curve looks quite similar to some other days we've had, the maximum generation throughout that day was just 8 watts. <laughs> on the positive side though, as you can see, the battery still lasted me throughout the day, only dipping as low as just below 40% so that was good. The best day was just three days later at 4.23 kilowatt hours. Not much better but still enough to keep the battery topped up while the sun was shining with a maximum generation of 1.1 kilowatts at around about three o'clock. And again the battery lasted until you, about half 11 there you can see got down to 50% and then when the cheap rate for Intelligent Octopus Core kicked in the battery started charging up again. And if we look at the grid import, as I mentioned in previous videos, 
I'm now charging the battery up full on a night because of the cheaper rate and then exporting anything that the solar makes during the day costing me seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour to top up the battery and I'm getting 15 pence per kilowatt hour for anything exported so worth filling up on a night and having a full battery to last me the day and as you can see a total of 193.61 kilowatt hours was imported from the grid throughout December so 139 almost of that went straight into the battery and 54 went into power in the home. Home consumption next and slightly higher this month of 214.28 kilowatt hours so this doesn't include the EV charging this is just purely what I use in the home and as you can see pretty comparable to other months with usage between four and a bit of a spike there for 10 kilowatt hours on the 13th of December. Still great to see though that most of that is supported by either the solar to the home or the battery to the home and then 54 kilowatt hours coming from the grid. Hopefully mostly on that nighttime usage rate so keeping the costs low. And if we look at the EV consumption via my Zappi and the My Energy app, as you can see, quite low this month. Uh, we didn't do quite as much travelling with it being Christmas. And that includes the home consumption as well. So around about 200 kilowatt hours imported to charge my EV. And thankfully, we've got all the data this month as well, so we can see it very clearly what we've used. And if you're looking grid export, not a great deal gone back to the grid this month, as you would expect in December. 27.9 kilowatt hours and... 13 of that was solar going straight back to the grid and 14 kilowatt hours of that was battery back to the grid and some of that could be for the saving sessions as well so you can see the the blue lines there they should mostly coincide i think with when the saving sessions were so taking advantage of that export rate that you get during those times and if we look next at payback i've just about managed to squeeze this all onto one page as you can see we've got a whole year's worth on there now so I'll have to sort this out for next year. Uh, as I mentioned, consumption 214.28 kilowatt hours, 193 kilowatt hours imported from the grid. And rather than put the amount on the cheap rate and the high rate, I've just multiplied that by the average on the bill, which was about 9.2 pence. So that equates to home consumption from the grid usage of 17 pounds and 81 pence. Generation came in at 50.43 kilowatt hours for the month and of that 27.9 kilowatt hours was exported which creates to a grand total incoming for export of four pounds and 19 pence and that gives an overall cost without solar if we were on the standard tariff of 58 pounds and 93 pence for the month and the cost with solar just 13 pounds and 63 pence so even in the worst month having solar and a battery is really helped to you know, minimise that electricity cost and keep that usage down from the grid. To add to that though, we also had a number of savings sessions throughout December and that equated to when I exported the battery came to £31.20 which obviously is great and really helps reduce that bill even further. So very happy with that. And that brings the total savings to £76.50 for the month. And if we add that on to the cumulative savings, that's £1,398.54 for the year. That doesn't include some saving sessions earlier in the year. If we add those on, that equates to around about nearly £1,600 for the year. So very happy with that. That leaves a remaining payback of £9,581.46 after 12 months of this year and the system when we got that installed was 10,980 so pretty good progress in the first 12 months. If we look at the EV usage on top of that as well we have 215 kilowatt hours used to power my Tesla which equates to just using that same 9.2 pence average of that equates to 19 pound and 78 pence and if we were filling my old car up with diesel, which is what I always try and compare it to, is that would have cost £1.45 per litre and equated to around about £130. So a good saving still of for driving the EV of around about £110.72. Although I don't include this directly in the solar payback, if we add that on to the monthly savings, that equates to £187.00. 
and provides a total cumulative savings, including the fuel costs of nearly £2,200. And if we add all that together, the standing charge on top of the electricity was £15.07 for December and an electricity charge of £37.60. Export made us back £4.19 and as mentioned those saving sessions equated to £31.20. By far the biggest expense this month, as you would expect in one of the coldest months of the year, was gas. So we paid £8.43 a standing charge for the 31 days in December. And we were charged £84.50, which, as mentioned, I think for one of the coldest months isn't too bad. Our house is quite good at retaining heat. And uh, yeah, I would expect the same for kind of January and February as well going forward. So that equates to a total of £110.21 for the month of December. So that is to essentially heat the house, provide our hot water, provide our electricity to power the house and also charge the EV as well. So when you think I was paying more than that in fuel when I had my diesel car, very, very happy with that in one of the coldest months of the year. So that's it for this video. If you found it useful, please hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Got quite a lot planned for 2024 going forward as well. So be sure you subscribe to stay in the loop with that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.